All right, we're going to get right into this. So currently the solar panels are not hooked up to this thing. It's just sitting there. Uh, I have a USB plug right there. Actually, there's two of them. And this is going to give you an idea what this thing can do as far as functions. So the little uh, button on the left, that red one, we're going to turn that on. That's going to activate our load and turn on those USB ports. So you can turn those on and off manually. And you can see the phone now is charging. And basically that kind of gives you a little bit of control. That way that's not just left on all the time and draining your battery. Right now there's 12.5 volts on the battery. There's no volts coming in from the cells and I have no amps coming in as well. And you can see right here my load currently is 0.7 volts. That's from the phone. Then the current temperature right now is 17 Celsius. That's that little antenna. And either way, whatever, you kind of, it just kind of sits there and hangs out. We'll kind of go through the menu a little bit right here. Let's turn off that. You can see the phone now is not charging anymore, so we turned our load off. And now we'll kind of run through the menu real quick. So right now, this is the amount of watts coming in. There's nothing because the panels are not hooked up. And then we'll kind of press this button again. No amps coming in. No amp hours have been made. Uh, no load as far as, you know, power going out. And then this is basically our float voltage. So at 13.8 volts, that's where your battery or this controller is going to shut off and basically maintain that kind of upper float area where it's going to maintain the 13.5 to 13.8 volts, keep your battery floating at top charge. 14.4 volts is your boost charge. Now it could run that up to a couple hours to get your battery up to a higher voltage um, until it kind of puts it down in that um, maximum power point tracking, which will kind of put it around 13.8, 13.5 volts at a certain amount of amps. Uh, this is where our working load will activate, basically. So at 12.8 volts, you can utilize your load, uh, those USB ports. And if you happen to get too low on voltage, it'll shut that off and you can't run anything. As you can see there, it says load and off. At 11.5 volts, you can actually adjust that to 11.8, 11.9 if you want. But basically, once you hit that, you won't be able to run anything anymore. And then this is basically a way to have your load being controlled by time. So you can have it run 24-7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week if you have it on this setting. If you put it to 23, then that little guy down there where your load is, it'll kind of run a, more on a sunrise to sunset type of setting. So that's on all the time. If you put it to 23 hours, then basically you're going to have it on a timer. And we'll take a look here. Uh, basically, we're just kind of running right back through the menu. Uh, you can see there, that's basically the same thing. So in a second here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and... Uh, Oh yeah, if you look at this right here, this is basically the battery that I have. So it's a sealed battery. You can run it for gel or a flooded lead acid battery, but I didn't see anything for a lithium. I don't know if this is compatible or not. There's nothing that says it is or it isn't. Anyway, that little light on there, that's gonna come on in a second. As you can see, the solar panels are severely shaded. So we're gonna see a real problem with our amps and our wattage, but our volts are probably gonna be all right. All right, so you see the solar panels now are connected. You can see that we're running about oh, 0.9 amps there a minute ago. We have no load, 17 degrees Celsius again. Take a look, we've already gone from 12.5 to 12.6 volts, bringing in about 42, 43 volts from the solar panels. And as you can see with the shade on those solar panels, we're severely affected as far as our wattage and our um, amperage coming in but the volts it's still going to supply power and actually bring this up and i'm going to let this sit for a little bit and we'll look at the uh, amount of power that comes in so this little menu guy here is how many low volt cycles if you happen to get past that 11.5 volts is going to count it as one that way you're kind of not damaging the battery this is the amount of working days that your solar panels have been working or plugged in anyway i had more than that and you can reset this thing uh, as you take a look here on this other menu, uh, it kind of goes back actually. There's a, a way to set this. This is 12 watts. If you press both buttons, you can actually reset some of your features. And we'll move along there. So 0.1 amp hours is what we've created in oh, five minutes or two minutes, however long we've been doing this video. While we're here, we'll do a quick little uh, test on it to kind of show you the accuracy of the controller up to this multimeter that I have, which this isn't a cheap one, so it's pretty accurate. I'm gonna slow down the video so you can see. 
All right, so right now it says 12.7 volts on the controller, and it will switch to the voltage coming from the panels. 42.3, 41.9, they both match. 41.5, they both match. It stays pretty consistent as I did this a couple times. It does get off by 0 0.2, 0 0.3 once in a while, but for the most part, it stayed pretty consistent and matched up with the controller with the multimeter. So, so far the numbers are pretty accurate. And we'll kind of speed the video back up here real quick. And we'll also check out our voltage at our battery. Just to kind of check those numbers for fun. 12.6 on the meter and 12.7 on the controller. So pretty accurate. Most of the time I carry a meter with me just to make, you know, just to kind of check. Make sure everything's functioning as it should. And I've had this plugged in for about 20 minutes now just to kind of take a peek. Uh, we're up to 0.3 amp hours. And no load currently because nothing's on. There's the battery selection again up to 12.9 volts on the battery. Still running about 42 volts coming in on the solar panels which are ran in series. That's basically a solar suitcase that I built. I'm going to be doing a video on that pretty quick. And while we're here, that's also a solar extension cable I made. It's about 16 feet long, running into the Furion adapter that you see plugged into my trailer here, which I did rewire that straight to the battery controller that's inside that you just saw. And then from the battery controller, you have your cables right here, as you can see, that run straight into my battery. And uh, this is also another little DIY video that I did. Uh, I'll put a link here pretty quick. If you want to kind of see how that is, but you can see my inline fuse to the controller and everything. I also have one from my solar panels right after that Furion connector. While we're in here, we'll take a look at my battery monitor. I have 0.2 amps being used on the trailer. That's your ghost load. It's basically your, your uh, stereo on standby, things like that. 12.8 volts currently, 194 amp hours. So... That kind of gives you the rundown of what it's doing right now. So if you guys like this solar charge controller, uh, you can take a look at the link up here. I'll put one there. If you like that battery monitor that you just saw, I'll put a link also as well up there. Take a look. And if you want to know how to calibrate the monitor, there's another little video and a link you can check right there. If you happen to like to see that battery box that I built, that was a simple and cheap idea. So you can check out the link there as well. Also, you can check out this DIY extension cable. And if you guys like what you saw, please like, subscribe. And on the next video, I'm going to be doing the solar suitcase. So stay tuned for that. Ring that bell, and I'll see you guys next time.